Hey there, welcome back to Online Marketing Foundations. We're still in module three, connect with your audience. And here in lesson six, we're, we're talking about the importance of emailing your list. Now, we're not gonna cover list building here in Online Marketing Foundations. That is an important thing you need to be doing. You should always be building your list. Your email list is one of the most valuable assets you can have in your business if you treat it right. And that's because you own it. No one else controls it. If you build followers on a social media platform, the social media platform can change the rules tomorrow and you could lose access to them. Whereas email is something you actually control. You actually kind of control that and have direct access into people's lives, into their inbox. So that is a powerful thing. And so that's why you always need to be emailing or building your list. Now, today in this lesson, we're talking about what to do once people are on your list. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And let's dive in. And we're going to start with a truth bomb. And this is it, that most people don't make money with email marketing, but it's because they're doing it wrong. A lot of people get frustrated, get fed up with email, and they think the problem is email. They think what, what they need is some other channel, some other medium to reach people, and the reality is that the problem isn't email, it's that they're not approaching email in the right way. They're not thinking of email as a way to connect with their audience. And so in this lesson, what you're gonna learn is how to think about email marketing the right way so that it actually will work for your business. Specifically, you're gonna learn that email marketing is about the journey, not the destination, that emailing your list is about building connections, and that you need to tell more stories in your emails. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And let's start with this first point, that email marketing is about the journey. And this is something I want you to get. If you want to make money with email marketing, you can't think of it only as a way to sell. And what I mean by this is there, there are some people who like randomly I got on their list somehow. I don't even know how I got on their list, but I don't hear from them for months on end. And then all of a sudden I get a bunch of emails from them. And you know why? It's because they're starting to sell. They're starting a promo. And so they're, they're emailing me and they're going to invite me to buy from them then. It's, it's funny. I happen to be recording this right around the time of, um, uh, of Thanksgiving week, which happens to be a Black Friday thing. And suddenly I'm getting emails from people who I had not heard from in months. And I know exactly why. Because they're going to make a Black Friday sale. And so they want me to buy from them. Guess what? I see that and I'm like, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to unsubscribe. Let me unsubscribe from your email list. It's not going to work if you take that approach. If the only time your audience gets an email from you is when you're asking for money, they're going to ignore you. Uh, I tell this story that, um, you know, uh, my wife and I had this friend um, who it got to the point that literally she only ever reached out to us when she needed something from us. It was like that friend who like calls you when they need help moving. And that's about it. <laughs> And after a while, it's like, okay, I'm done. And we kind of, you know, we, we disengage from the friendship because that's not what a friendship is. Well, it's the same thing with email. If you're only ever emailing them when you're asking for money, it's like only calling people when you want help moving. It's not going to work. So instead of that, you need to think of email marketing as a five-step journey that you take your audience on after they join your list. And if you think about it this way, if you think about it as the journey things will be way easier and it'll actually work. So this is kind of a taste of, I have an entire email marketing course, Badass Email Marketing, where we go in depth about all this stuff, but I want you to understand it here at a foundational level. So here is the journey that I suggest people take or get taken on. The first email is what I call the catch email. This is kind of the first email to new subscribers. And it's, it's a, a kind of a, a choreographed way where it's not a, Hey, here's your thing. You're actually going to give meaning to the decision they made. You want to kind of encourage them and kind of, you know, connect with them, show that, you know, something about them that will actually relate to them based on the fact that they actually did, you know, that they actually like downloaded your freebie. The next thing is the nurture sequence and a nurture sequence. Some people will use it like, you know, if you have something for someone to buy right away, like a tripwire, like a little low price offer, you can use it there. But most times what that nurture sequence should be is something that helps people unpack the value of what they just downloaded. So 
if you came onto my list at the beginning by joining this badass online marketing university, you got a series of emails that helped you unpack it, that helped you understand and get value from this program. You do that because you want to really kind of build up the trust factor and get people saying, wow, this person really wants to help me. That is incredibly valuable. Then you move on to the welcome sequence. A welcome sequence is a more general sequence that's not about the thing they just downloaded. It starts to make a shift over to you. You're going to talk about things like what are your core values? What are the things you believe in? What are your products? How can you help them? What is your core content? You're letting people into your world so they really get to know you and understand you and they can kind of make a decision. Do they want to stay or do they want to go? Do they want to be part of your world or not based upon all those things? So if you think about it, we've talked about how like doing all of these things in connection in the connect phase really allows people you to kind of attract the right people and repel the wrong people. Your welcome sequence is how you're doing that with email right up front. You're letting people know what to expect. So that's how a welcome sequence comes in. Then from there, after they've finished those emails, and, and so everything that's happened to this point, your catch email, your nurture sequence, and your welcome sequence, those are all pre-written. They're just happening, and every time when someone gets on your list, they're going to go through the same thing. Then after that, people go on to your weekly email list. And this is where the magic happens. This is the, the emails you send to your list each and every week about something that's happening that week. Now, we're going to talk in a bit about the structure of that and how to do it. But generally what you're doing is going to be, it's a little bit about your content, but not really. The point of this is to allow your personality to shine. So people, again, get to know your more cowbell. They get to understand you at a deeper level and they get to connect with you through story. So they like you. And that is, again, where the magic happens. And then the final piece is kind of the promo sequences where you ask people to buy. Now, again, sometimes you'll have some things you're asking people to buy along the way. But ultimately, this is kind of the, the piece where, you know, when you're doing a promotion or when you're actually trying to get people to buy something, you kind of email them about it. And it happens because you're emailing them all the time. People are already connected with you, feel connected with you, et cetera. So that's the five-step journey. You can see how you do this. And by the way, anytime you're done with a promo sequence, they go back to just your normal weekly emails. So you're always emailing them. And this journey is what gives you the time to connect with your audience, which then primes them to buy. In other words, because you've been sending them all those emails before the promo sequence, if the product is right for them, they're going to buy because they already know you, they already like you, and they already trust you. That's the magic of email. So kind of the way to think about it is like, look, if you want email marketing to work, you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to think of it as a journey, not as a quick fix, not as something where it's like, oh, it's an easy button. I send some emails. I make some money. Now I can do that now because I have an audience of people who are warmed up to buy from me. So that's what you need to understand. So now let's move on to the second piece, which is, again, that the goal of most emails is to build connection. So you've gotten this, right? And you understand that idea. Because emails give you direct access to your audience, they are a powerful channel to connect. I mean, you have basically something that allows you to get in front of them each and every week. So you should be emailing your list each and every week, but not if it's just a check the box exercise. Now, if you're just emailing because I told you to or someone said you're supposed to, it's not going to work because it'll be robotic. I used to do that. It does not work. You have to think of each email as an opportunity to build or deepen your relationship with people. Again, that's how you have to think about it. That needs to be your approach. That needs to be your goal. Taking the time to build those connections week in and week out is what makes email work. So that has to be the approach. It's not a check the box, not what well, Bobby said so, so I got to send it or something like that. It's like, okay, well, how can I try to connect with my audience? And so that's what you need to do. So um, that's kind of the, the, the outset. I want you to think of your intention. Now let's talk about the structure. And the, the structure is basically tell more stories in your email, okay? I want you to get this piece too, because look, I'm going to give you some hard love now. Nobody wants another newsletter in their inbox. I don't know about you, but I've never gotten an email or a, an email newsletter or a regular e or newsletter and said, woohoo, yes, I'm so excited. 
it doesn't work that way because newsletters, they're boring. I mean, they just are by nature. And so a newsletter, and, and this is something where, you know, I, I don't care if you call your thing a newsletter, but it better not be structured like a newsletter where it's like a highlight of things that happened to you know, that happened that week or content that week. If that's all it is, it's not going to do you a lot of good. And another thing you need to get, if people want to consume your content, they'll consume your content. Okay. So if people want to listen to your podcast, read your blog post, uh, watch your YouTube show, watch your, your Facebook live, whatever your core content is, if they want to do that, they're going to do that. So don't use your weekly emails to summarize your core content from the week. Now we're going to talk about, you're going to talk about your content, but it's not about summarizing. A lot of people think, oh, well, I'll just pull my blog post over and put it in an email, or I'll just put a summary of it. Don't do that because that's not effective. Again, that's not about connection. The core of your weekly email is a vignette story from your life. Again, in the story section, we talked about this, about the idea of vignette stories. And this is what you need to be doing. Okay. You need to be thinking of a vignette story each week that you allowed, that you use. And here's the structure of your email. It's hook, the vignette story, and then a call to action. The hook is just to grab their attention. Normally that will be your subject line. It's just something to get their attention. So they're going to pay attention. Then you tell that vignette story and then you have a call to action and your call to action. If you're following what, what I taught you earlier and you're creating weekly content, your call to action will be to go check out your content, but it's very short. It'll be, Hey, in this week's episode, in my case, it'll be in this week's episode of the certified badass online marketing podcast, we talk about blank, whatever it is. And then I'll have like two to three like sentence length paragraphs, literally, you know, a sentence, a sentence, a sentence about it. And it's not even a summary. It's like something about it. And then I'll again, have another call to action. So y'all have two different links there where people can go to check it out. And, and that's the subject or that's the, the email. Now the email, the bulk of it is the vignette story, telling that story that lets people get to know me, get to know my life, get to understand me. Those are the things. That's what I, um, spend most of the time on. And that's what you should spend the most time on. Now, given this structure, one of the things you can see is that you have to find a vignette that relates to the topic of your core content. So you can pivot to the call to action, right? So the way you do this is you tell a story that somehow you can relate into whatever you're going to ask them to do or whatever the content is that week. And you'll just do a kind of quick shift and say, you know, and move to that thing. And that's how you do it. But here's what I want you to get the call to action is not the goal. Um, I don't care what my click through rate is on my emails on a weekly basis. A lot of people fixate on those kinds of statistics. I don't because the purpose is to build connection and the purpose is to let people get to know me. And that happens by me telling that vignette story, whether they click to listen to my podcast or not. Now, again, because I have a podcast, I know most people don't listen to a podcast by clicking on an email. I mean, you know, they listen in I don't know, in Apple podcasts or, uh, you know, whatever their podcast app is. And so that's not the goal, but it should not be your goal either. The goal and your intention with the email needs to be, how do I build connection? The value of your core content is it gives you a frame. It's like, okay, well, I'm talking about this. So I'll tell a story that somehow relates to it, but it also is a prompt to remind you to send that email. So, uh, that's the goal. Now, again, the kind of big highlight summary here is that email marketing is one of the most powerful tools of connection if you're willing to do the work, but you got to be willing to do the work. So focus on writing emails that will connect with your audience and this will actually serve you over the long term. Now, in the next module, you'll discover how to convert your audience to buyers. So we're moving on to, to the piece, which is actually about the selling part uh, of, your, uh, of the journey. So I'll see you in the next module.